Wandering through the great plains of life Things move fast, sometimes a blur Don't you let this bumpy road Separate you from the herd and When you think the day is done The sun is getting low We're all looking for something rare The great white buffalo The great white buffalo Podcast with Ben Mayfield What the force can and can't do I'm going to annihilate you I just want you to know that And I'm going to use The current oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can say what you're, I'll you're gonna use again. what? What are you gonna what use? Feel free to argue with me. You can't win for two reasons. Number one, I'm an idiot. Number two, that's fair. I know the trigger words that my generation has developed. Trigger word like that would trigger me. Yeah. I, I, ben and I were discussing it at Dairy Queen. We taught him a new one. Oh, we did. Here. But <laughs> what, if I don't know what the word means, how is it gonna trigger me? That's also true. That's valuable. However, <laughs> Ben and I are gonna understand. And you're not. Who cares? And then you're just gonna feel left out. Oh no, I don't. I don't ever feel left out of anything. If <laughs> people, if, if people out. are like pushing me out of a situation that they don't want me to part, be a part of, then I'm just like, that's fine. And that's that's wisdom and maturity there. <laughs> that's really healthy, man. Yeah, man. I'm almost forty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to another episode of the Great White Buffalo Podcast. I'm your host Ben Mayfield, and ladies and gentlemen, by popular demand. If you go to the Great White Buffalo Podcast YouTube page, we're up to 132 subscribers, oh, 1 million that. listeners, we need to be something like that. that. We need more than that. We need more than that. We're yeah. working towards it. I uh, The number one downloaded episode is with these two gentlemen right here. And Are so, you serious? Yes. That's it's, awesome. it's number one. Okay. Uh, and and it's, well, it's, it's being climbed. Like, there's a couple of videos that are like about oh, to Oh, they're surpass. catching up. They're catching okay. up. I got it. Uh, but... I we'll said go it. back and watch that one then. Yeah, 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 let's yeah. go back and watch it. Please. Or we're going to make this episode number one. That could be. You oh, know? Yeah, just watch this one. Instead. You never know. Yeah. So to my left, he's a veteran of the podcast. You know him. You love him. It's Jake Riggs. What's up, buddy? Dude, I'm so glad to have you back here. So glad to Dude, be here. The Braves are chomping on right now, bro. We're winning right now. Yeah. And we are we have the best record in the MLB right now. I think we might have been tied with the Pirates uh, and the, the Mets just got swept by the Tigers, so I'm really, <laughs> really excited about that. Dude, I, I well, I, let me introduce real quick. It's Garrett Moore, everybody. What's up, Gary Bear? Hey, guys. What's up? How y'all doing? The man who told his first true love story here on the podcast. Talked about grinding with the homies, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? <laughs> the bromance is real. What oh, can I that's say? That's yeah. nice. Oh, Dude, how progressive of you. So I went to a Braves game a couple weeks ago. Okay. And With your friend Winston? No, 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 no. This was with my friend Thomas, whose wife, shout out to Emily and Thomas. We love them. Emily works for Arthur Blank. Dang. Like, like for him. Like, wow. Sees him on a daily basis. If, if you don't know, Arthur Blank is the owner of the Atlanta Falcons and Atlanta, Atlanta United. United. That's yeah. right. Atlanta United uh, Soccer Club. So, What if he owned the Atlanta Braves to make that the trifecta? Well, I don't like how he runs the other two organizations, so I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> what? I, what are the Falcons like? are terrible. Oh, that's well, they're terrible. Yeah. I guess yeah. If you're talking about like, like record wise, yeah, they're, they're pretty bad. I they're didn't really know bad. Who he was so. Uh, thank you for explaining. Yeah, Arthur uh, Blank, kind of a big deal in uh, in the Atlanta area. Atlanta area. Well, we went to a Falcons. That's crazy. Uh, not a Falcons game. We went to a Braves game, and you've been to a game. So Did she get been? tickets by her connection with Arthur Blank somehow? No, I don't know. I, oh, okay. I don't know. They just invited you. They just invited me. So That's I nice went with them, and I'm sitting there. And we're having a great time. We're in great seats. And I was just doing my normal Ben Mayfield stuff, <laughs> right? And it took trying me to jumbo, <laughs> yeah, trying, trying to get on Jumbotron. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it wasn't the first inning. It was like maybe like the fourth or fifth. I had to get warmed up, you know, like kind of like get in the game. Well, yeah, because you don't want to pull a muscle. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. start going crazy in the first inning, you're really, you're gonna hurt yourself. Exactly, it's a stamina thing. You got to make it through the whole game. And if you don't pace yourself right, you know you'll make it to the third or fourth. Yeah, I think you'll be out, gassed. So. Yeah, you gotta. I, I get it. Well, and I'm going in, and I'm just like I'm just yelling things that are not. Uh, what's the word? They're not hostile. Well, I've been a little hostile, but they're not mean. Right, I'm not saying vul- vulgar stuff. There's the word. I'm not saying cuss words or <laughs> even like that. I say like one of the things that I got a huge reaction from the crowd was, I was like, "Our umpire is sponsored by Old Spice because it stinks," <laughs> and like the crowd just went like wild. They're like, "Yeah!" Oh man! And so I'm just like yelling stuff like this. I use my classic one of like, 
I hope the umpire scra- breaks his iPhone. It has a cracked screen. <laughs> it scratches his ear or something, you know, something like that. And everybody's like, yeah. It's like a, re- <laughs> a really long insult. <laughs> yeah. and, and like, oddly specific, it was like, what? I get, yeah. like, everybody knows if you crack your iPhone screen. You a, lot of the, a lot of different things would have to happen to make that come true, what yeah. you wanted to happen. Well, all that to be said, <laughs> this guy who's like, I don't know, six rows ahead of us to, to the left, uh, Bald guy too, and like with a with a goatee, looked like a villain, like a James Bond villain. That's not me. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. no you said you. bald guy. Yeah, old, old, older man. I was thinking about my dad. <laughs> was it Greg? No. You know what? No, it wasn't Greg. It wasn't Greg. He stands up. He he's like, looks at me like this, like, and he's a Braves fan. I'm like, he's getting mad at you. Yeah, and I was like, let's go, Bravos! Like, and luckily there was a cop. Just like kind of watching the game, leaning yeah, against yeah. something like right next to me. And so it's like, what are you going to do? Attack me? I got a cop like right here. <laughs> so I kept just going on. And you can tell he's just like, and his wife was trying to calm him down. It's like, what's he getting? Were, you, were we losing? No, we were winning. He was just, I think he was just angry that someone was yelling. Oh, because he wanted to be quiet. Yeah. And okay. Let's, let's talk about that for a minute. All right. Okay. When you go to a ball game, mm-hmm. it's outdoors. Facts. There's well thousands of yeah, people. Braves game, yeah. Thousands. Of, right, right. Some stadiums are indoors. I get yeah. it. But the Braves game, it's outdoors. Yeah. Thousands of people around you. Facts. Speakers going that play music. There's mm-hmm. the organist. There's the noise on the field. Straight facts. All sorts of stuff going on, right? It is not a place where I would expect there to be silence. Mm-hmm. Last season, I went to a game with my family. And my son is eight years old. And... He is not really into baseball. He kind of likes it because I like it, but just he's eight, you know? Yeah. And so he's lucky if he can make it through the sixth inning without needing some sort of other stimuli. And usually it's like, okay, here, you can watch YouTube for a little bit or play a game on my phone just so we can get, you know, if it was a blowout, okay, we can leave early or whatever. Right. But I paid for my ticket, so I want to watch the whole game. That's me. That makes sense. I'm okay. With you. So we got through about six, and finally he's just, I could tell he's getting antsy because he's moving, he's moving around, and he keeps, he keeps looking at me. He'll give me the eyes, like, he'll, he'll, he'll hold his hands out like this. Like, Papa, like, Papa, give me the phone, Give please. me the phone, that's what it is, he'll go, just look at me. <laughs> he won't say anything, <laughs> just big eyes, and so, so I'm like, okay, okay, fine, just so we can get through the game, because I'm pretty sure it was a pretty good, we were playing the Astros, so it was the team that we had beat the previous year. For the, the World, World Series. Series. So it was kind of, and and uh, we ended up winning the game. So I gave him the phone, and he's watching YouTube, and it's making some noise. Not louder than anything that's going on around us, but these this um, couple in front of us is two girls, um, and they were a couple. I'm not saying that's got anything to do with the story, but that's just the facts of the story. Uh, one of them turns around and goes, can you turn that down? It's very distracting. Talking about the phone. The, Did she say it to you or to Liam? She said it to my wife. Oh, your wife. Okay. Who was sitting next to Liam. We were there with another family. And so, like, me and Scott Sinkowitz, we were sitting down a little Shout further. Scott. And then it was, like, the kids and then our wives. So it was, like, guys talking baseball, kids doing kid things. Yeah. Wives was, talking that about. That wild, wives, but... wives making fun. of p- Wives people watching. Yeah. You know, and being like, how could she wear that? Some, you know, whatever wives talk about. Anyway. But she turned around to my wife and said, can you turn that down? It's very distracting. And she said, my, I can't remember if she said my girlfriend or my wife is a police officer. And she has, um, uh, uh, what's the post-traumatic, post-traumatic stress? stress. And, it, and all the noise um, is stressing her out. And, and Anna looks down to me and tells me that that happens. And I look back at her and I say, did you turn it down? And she goes a little bit. And I said, you turn that back up. It doesn't matter. There's stuff going on everywhere. There are drums and people going, oh, there are bomb, bomb, bomb. Oh, and then yeah. speakers going on. You're lucky I, I was not there. I would have been I was like, turn that nauseous. back up. And it, it, it didn't become anything more than that. But it was just the most absurd thing to think about that my son's watching YouTube and the, the little bit of volume that is in no way louder than everything else in the stadium, that's the thing that's causing her stress. 
We'll see. Don't, you, that's yeah. that's garbage. Well, I'm, I'm deaf enough where I have to put my phone next to my ear to even hear it in, in right. a silent room. Right. Well, so. even like even if he had it turned all the way up, he probably couldn't hear it exceptionally yeah. well because there's a lot going on. It was just if you go to a ball game, you got to expect that it's going to be kind of noisy. So for that guy, if that's what it was for him to get upset yeah. that you were yelling at a ball game, yeah. like then go watch it in your living room, man. It's true. Now, if I was like, if he was right in front of me, he's like, dude, can you stop? I'm like, oh, yeah, like, like you're like yelling right, yeah. right in his ear. I said, like, like all right, you know what? I'm yeah. my beat, my beat, my beat. Yeah. But it was funny. I had the, the ladies to the right to me were like, hey, when are you coming back to the game? Because <laughs> we would have come when you're here because you make it so much more fun. Let's I was change like, information. We'll I was go like, to the games together. Yeah, I was like, yeah, come on. You buy me a ticket, I'll go. You should go sit with that guy down there. He didn't like to have any fun. I feel like you're pretty entertaining, I would imagine. Yeah, no, if I have the right crowd, like, if I went with y'all, I'd be all hype and energy. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, that's, like, half the fun of going to a sporting event. Yeah, man. If I'm watching baseball at home, it's just, like, baseball. (laughs) Baseball. Should I do some laundry? I don't know. Exactly. But then when you're there with the crowd, you have that energy, that noise, that excitement. It makes it so much better of an experience. And I feel like... If you're going there and you're complaining about the noise or someone getting hyped about it, dude, it's ridiculous. Go home, nerd. Go home. Why don't you go sit in silence? <laughs> That's what you should have said to that yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah, go home, nerd. <laughs> no one wants you here. Did you uh, That's at absurd, UGA man. games? I mean, I'm sure oh y'all went wild. Gosh, that Those are was, wild. That's his first so season, out, right? The t- UGA versus Tennessee game. Oh yeah. I had to get there five hours before kickoff. In because, order to get decent because, seats. Because Tennessee was doing really well last They're season, both, lead, uh, yeah. leading up to One that game. One of the game. previous and games. And so people were like, oh, this is going to be a really tough game. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Student tickets were selling for over $500. Jeez, man. You know how much I got mine for? Ten but, bucks. Uh, ten bucks. Because Cause you're a, cause you were a student? Because I am a student. And if you buy it and like you get it directly from UGA, you have to get in a lottery for it. Got it. All freshmen get every home game. Ten dollars oh, each. Wow. I paid sixty dollars. Got every home game. They're trying to. They're trying to create fans. Yeah, yes. they want people there. Yeah, but I got it. The UJ Tennessee game. I got there five hours before kickoff. It was crowded. You, yeah, there yeah. was nowhere to stand. People were auctioning off food and water there in the stadium. Not in the stadium. Oh, this okay. was in the line before the stadium. They don't open up gates until an hour before oh, kickoff. Got it, got it, got it, got so it, I was okay. in line for four hours. Jeez, man. You saw Jake Scarf there too. Yeah, like in the lines, like. Hey, I recognize that blonde headed kid. And so when we finally got in, that was the most crowded game I ever saw. It was insane. It hit over 130 decibel levels. That's wild, man. That's more than a think jet about this. Like if, if you go to a if you go to a movie theater, you're sitting at probably about like 95 to 103 decibels. That's like your standard. Oh, wow. In a movie theater, so 130 decibels. That's, yeah, that's really loud. It's louder loud. than a jet engine takeoff. Some people had hearing damage from it, <laughs> and because of it, Eerie. Tennessee people's, e- people's eardrums are bleeding. <laughs> but that's the thing. UGA. It's so loud. <laughs> there's a culture in UGA that gave sorry Buffalo the dogs somewhat of an unfair advantage. We stay quiet when our team's on offense. Well, yeah, meaning. That Tennessee had so many false starts just because we were yelling and they couldn't That's hear what was going UGA on. That's not just the UGA thing. That's just a stadium college chatter. It is, college but once you hit yeah. the 130 decibel level, that's to a point where it's. What's the loud? I think I think LSU has the record for the loudest um, uh, stadium. Did, the Falcons in got in football. trouble. I think one year. I think they were pumping. They were pumping, they were pumping stuff through the speakers. Yeah, to make I think it LSU loud. has the record for the loudest crowd decibel level yeah, without at a cheating. game without cheating right right i think yeah. uga may have broken that at maybe UGA they did i'd have to look that game. up yeah, but yeah i think that's pretty standard among college football it was but that's insane. um so okay tell me this when you have a student ticket is it just like first come first serve in the student section it's a free-for-all yeah okay so there's no um, assigned seating there is no that's why you, you got get there so in early. the gate got well it. i made the mistake once i showed up an hour or two before the Auburn game. <laughs> there was game. No, nowhere for you to stand. Exactly. There was yeah. nowhere for me to sit. And I got there two hours before kickoff at the yeah. Auburn game. I got screwed out of a seat even though I had the ticket. Right, right. And so well, it's like, you could have gotten like a, a way up there, couldn't you? Maybe. Second I think floor. that was pretty filled up too, though. Uh-oh. So it got to the point where I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm out. Okay. Is what it is. So um, I get it. That makes sense now. I was like, why did you get there so early if it's assigned seating, but you don't have that? My, my college years, we had a, a, a set spot. That we always said at that was like the meetup spot, and it's where you know where the band is 
there's like the yep. with the, with the red coat van yes. sits. Yep. Uh, there's one little section right next to it, and we would always sit right there. So we, like no matter what time you showed up, like you knew where all your friends would be. Like like we always sat there, and it says it's next to the red coat van. And it's like kind of in the niche corner there. Not a lot of people would would go there. Like that's not the prime spot. Everybody wants to be middle, right? Right. You know, because it's like I can see both. It's like nah, we'll always go there because but more about the people. And you got a giant screen you can see, right? When he plays in for sure. But it, it's incredible. I mean, because the Tennessee Georgia game was undefeated, undefeated. This was like whoever won this was gonna be like East champs, gonna be like potentially SEC champs. What was the score of that game? Did we blow them out? Oh, we blew them out. Yeah. Oh, we destroyed yeah, them. them. Yeah. There was a lot of there was a lot of talk about what if the Bulldogs were as good as their record suggested and their and their yeah. score differential suggested. There was just a lot of chatter about that. Not just at that game, but when we even when we got into like the semifinals and the finals, like they were like Georgia's. We had more <laughs> we had more struggle with Ohio State than we did with TCU yeah, we <laughs> in the not, semifinals. We should not have beat Ohio. That, that was close, man. That it was, was tough. close. Tough I, game. I don't think we deserved that. We well, didn't. TCU obviously didn't deserve to beat Michigan. Yeah, they no, got no. they got <laughs> wrecked. Yeah, Ohio State definitely got second place. Yeah, uh, there's also we struggled against. Oh gosh, well not was it Kent State too? Like we ended up one of those. Them. What we thought was, was going to be a throwaway State. game. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> I was at struggled. that game and we were like, I thought this was going right. to be an easy game. What's going on here? Doesn't feel right. Yeah, so Jordan well, definitely knows? had some ups and downs. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> that's just how it goes in sports. I think that's why I like. I don't follow the NBA very much, but I do like watching March Madness because mm. it's, it's so many well, it's two different things. topsy-turvy. I know. I don't like watching NBA at all, but I'll watch March Madness because of the potential underdog set situations. Okay. so, so I no understand that the NCAA and the NBA are two different okay, things. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not an idiot. Sure. I was, well, well, you said I don't watch the NBA, I'll watch March Madness. I right. Like, I, I, when I say that, I mean, like I don't really watch basketball very much, but I do like I March gotcha, Madness gotcha. because it's like – you got a 16 seed beating a first seed. It's Which freaking is, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's so, so cool. Good. I love underdog stories. So. And there were several this year too. The NCAA. Do y'all make brackets? No, I don't do that because I just I know that I don't know enough about it to make an yeah. informed guess. I do by mascots. With them. I don't know what's going <laughs> by, on with them, dude. By yeah. mascots. Everyone yeah. made ma- brackets in my dorm this year, and I was just like, "Yup, I'm a watch." Dude, I'm all, a watch. all you do is take like, all right, this mascot is a Longhorn bull. And this one is a, a puppy dog. All right, who's gonna win? Bull's gonna win that one. <laughs> like you know, like got it. And, you know, sometimes surprisingly that may win. That may work may sometimes. Win. The only problem sometimes when you have two tigers, <laughs> and it's like, all right, color scheme. Which one do I like better? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the default because it's hard to tell some mascots because like one of them is like the the Duke. It's the Blue Devils. So mm-hmm. like, oh my god, the, I'm sure the Blue Devil. I don't know what a devil versus a Blue Devil is, but Pretty sure he's got some powers. I mean, the devil's got to be pretty strong. It's pretty so, strong. So I, to, so I have to put some like caveats. Like, all right, the devil can't win everything. Like, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. You can cut no, that out. He can't no. win a fiddle. He can't win a fiddle contest. We know that. That's one of his limits. It's <laughs> so, so a good point. Play against the fiddleheads. He's going to lose. Oh, the fiddleheads. God. Local Delonica celebrities. I know, I know. Yeah. Well, today also, when we're filming this, it may not be released on this day. Well, I won't. I know it won't. It 100% won't be. It won't be. (laughs) But we're filming on May the 4th, which is... National Star Trek Day, right? Yeah, yeah. National Star Trek, uh, Live Long and Prosper (laughs) is... No, Star Wars Day. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, guy. I messed that up. May the 4th be with you. Uh, May the 4th be with you. I tried to tell my son that this morning. I was like, it's Star Wars Day. He goes, what? I said, well, you know how Star Wars they say, may the force be with you? It's like, today's May the 4th, so it's may the 4th be with you. And he just goes, I don't understand. <laughs> just put your shoes on. <laughs> Let's, we're going to school. God. Can you tell him tomorrow is Revenge of the 5th? Revenge of the 5th. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Dad, you're an idiot. Yeah, he, won't. He, he doesn't remember what, they're, what the movies are called, so he won't, he uh-uh. won't realize it anyway. <laughs> Revenge of the 5th. That's a good one. That's really good. Gosh, yeah. So... Star Wars. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to I quit because I know not everybody is a huge Star Wars fan. Used to be, uh, but not anymore. Well, and our listeners, I don't know if you're like super into Star Wars or not, but I wanted to do like, do y'all have like a like a Star Wars moment that sticks out to you as like a really cool, uh, maybe something. I loved the movies when I was a kid, the original ones before the um, uh, the prequels came out. 
and I used to Return of the Jedi was always my favorite as a kid. I think now as an adult watching it, I think um, Empire Strikes Back is probably my favorite because I just feel like it's the mm-hmm. most complete movie. But I still love. There's so many great moments in Return of the Jedi, like you get to see Jabba the Hutt and Jabba's palace, and um, they always do such a great job in those movies of creating tension in multiple places for like the final battle. So it's like Endor and the space battle outside the Death Star, and then the tension with Luke and, and Darth Vader in the Death Star. It's just yeah, like some like really three great, different yeah. battle fronts. But yeah. then, and then of course, like uh, the Ewok battle is just so great, so iconic. Yeah. What about you? Do you have any Star Wars moments? I've never seen Return of the Jedi all the way through. Why the crap did you come with us to watch the sequels to the original trilogy if you had not seen those? I've seen bits and pieces, and I'm pretty sure I saw it like as a kid, but like I don't remember it well. And it's why what makes you, it even worse. Why is that, wouldn't you have watched it? What makes it even worse is that I have the original unedited version. On yeah, VHS. I can say that I I have those two in my parents' basement somewhere. I can say that I appreciate those better than like the re digital, the re digitized versions that they released in the two thousands where they added some things and, uh, but uh, why wouldn't you? Have... I'm gonna go back and watch it. You know, it's it's been in the plans for a while. Original shake, on, tri- shake on it. The original, yeah, the original trilogy is still really good. But, um, I mean, Phantom Menace when that came out. I was in sixth grade, so I was super pumped about it, and I loved that movie then. Um, I knew when Attack of the Clones came out that it was not good, <laughs> even though I was a kid. I fell asleep in the theater for that movie. You know, it had a first, it had a great first act. Mm-hmm. It dragged in the tip, middle, which tip. is where I fell asleep. Yeah. Genosis was awesome. And the third act was really, was really, awesome. really, really good. I remember the, the third movie, the Attack of the Clones, I remember my dad being gone doing military stuff. And so he missed my birthday, which they always do it during the summertime. So and I have a June birthday. And I remember my birthday, he wasn't there. But for it's like the best birthday I've ever had, not yeah. because of him not being there, but because the gifts that I got were all the Jedis from uh, Attack of the Clones. They did like a... Like all the Geonosis, all these random Jedi's that like were only in the movie for like Kit four Fisto seconds. And yeah, like uh, Plo Koon, Plo Koon. Kana Mooney, uh, uh, Shock T, Sintis, Eth Koth, like it's, all it's these like people. That that like ru- the scene where they're like all running with their lightsabers against like the battle lines. It's it's really yeah, cool. It's, so I just I just I, I got them all and I was like, this is the greatest birthday ever. <laughs> <laughs> It's like all right, go, like the action go. figures you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got all the all the different action figures. Was that when they still didn't like their arms didn't bend? It was just like this, and their legs just they, their their joints and the elbows and the knees didn't bend. Uh, every once in a while, you'd have one that had like an elbow thing. It could do like this. Oh yeah, it was yeah. Like, whoa, like, whoa, deflect, hey, hey. deflect. <laughs> the new Star Wars action figures are really cool. Like the 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 the, the just the articulation in them. Yeah, they can like. Move. They've, they've Liam's got a few it. from the. He's got um, Moff Gideon and the Mandalorian, Ooh. and then a Grogu, a little bitty Grogu that he likes to play with because he loves the Mandalorian. Does he? Which he I loves the Mandalorian. Loves it so good. Even I love the new it. season. So here's what I felt about the new season. If we're going to talk about it, um, I didn't feel like at first there was any sense of urgency. There was no like, there was no building up to really anything. At least that right. I could see at the time until we got to episode seven and eight. And then I really started seeing like what what they were trying to build up there. And I think the uh, joining of the Mandalorian clans and that final battle, I mean, I, I think it was really great. I well, really enjoyed it. There, there was one thing, too. Have you watched The Mandalorian? I saw seasons one and two, and my dad canceled Disney+, Plus, so I have not <laughs> seen season three. That's- did he cancel it because he doesn't like the direction Disney's going politically? I think he just got bored of all the shows and was like, <laughs> he Listen, watched them all. To be yeah. honest, like there are a small handful of good original shows on Disney Plus. I just got burned there, out. There's on not them. really good. Like, Disney's actually not making really anything that great right now. At first, yeah. it was like, oh my gosh, WandaVision, something cool. WandaVision and new. was so good. But then it was like, I'm having a new show. Every single week, mm-hmm. I'm no longer excited. 
Like, because, like, it used to be you'd get your daily dose of Marvel or Star Wars. You'd get, like, something every few months, maybe. Yeah, yeah they've oversaturated the well, market. They've oversaturated the market, and I think they've, they've s- tried to put too much out that they've sacrificed whatever quality they yeah. could have with it. The CGI in Marvel shows that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, well, that's, sure. that's kind of what happened. I don't know if y'all have heard, like, the Disney CEO after Bob Iger is Bob so-and-so. I can't think his last name. Bob Eisner? Uh, no, that was... The Michael Eisner. Michael Eisner came back, right? No, he was before Bob Iger. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah I know yeah. who you're talking about. It's a, it's a new Bob. Uh, but Michael Bob Iger has come back though, right? Well, well, what happened was when the new guy came, he was wanting to capitalize on the popularity of Marvel. He was just thinking and about dollar so, signs. Dollar signs. So yeah, he's like, yeah. I want as many shows. And it, and Kevin Feige has even talked about it. like he told Kevin Feige, you have to make all like I want more content. And when they That's did was insane. they stretched out their CGI artists, they stretched out their writers, they stretched out their directors and all this stuff, and just to make content, and you saw it tanking in quality and because it was all about quantity. So they got rid of this bot, the new Bob, mm-hmm. got rid of it and brought Bob Iger back to it. And when they brought Bob Iger back, he has now slowed it down a little bit. Let's get back to the quality of Marvel. So I'm really hoping this next phase of movies and shows brings back the, I don't know, just the incredible quality into it. Yeah, and like the Bob Chapek, th- is that his name? Yeah. Chapek, Bob Chapek. Uh, yeah. That's right. The only one they've got coming out that I'm really like excited for is Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I've heard it's really good. Oh, it comes right? out tomorrow. I've also heard it's good. Well, it's out tonight, out today, technically. technically. That's true. Um, so IGN sometimes will be able to get their hands on watching an early sh- sh- showing of movies or no shows. spoilers folks. no spoilers i don't know anything about it um i just know that they said it was really good it was really good yeah and i think they gave it an eight out of ten eight out of ten IGN. on ign which is um, which is really good for them i mean and for a trilogy piece yeah for all three of them and the holiday special was really good too i remember when i saw guardians volume two at first i was kind of like this is okay i just guardians the first one was such a surprise at how good it was for me um the second one just kind of when i saw it at first it it didn't grab me as much but i've since watched it again a few times and it's actually really good the Guard, first one the second one the second one the second yeah yeah first one's just classic it's yeah, just yeah. it's gonna be it's so good all the time but and the second one's different. actually really really good too um they just have the characters are so good together like they got they casted that perfectly and they're all great uh they they work well together I got you. Yeah. I got you. Well, I, I was I know wondering about Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Guard into the yeah. galaxy. They're well, both in space. They're cousins. <laughs> That's right. They're both in space. <laughs> they could meet someday, maybe. I Captain you, Kirk, Star Lord. I bet you Peter Quill, Quill knows what Star Wars is. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent does. does. Yeah, uh, probably has a crush on. Him. He probably Captain Kirk was his idol for sure. So, with that, I, I don't know if you if y'all listen. One of the things that we've done in the recent episodes. It's mm. been really popular. Is we've been doing a draft, okay, top five draft, and the way that we've done this before is, we'll say we'll let Garrett go first. We'll do youngest just to go start off, and then we'll go Jake, and then I'll go last. Because uh, I'm the second youngest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just a circle. <laughs> it's just a circle. Host has to go. Ben's last. older than me. I'm 87 years old. <laughs> doing really well for you myself. You look like a Dunedain, yeah. like a ranger from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, plus with long life. Okay, nerd. Um, <laughs> Nerd. Thank nah. you. Uh, so, but yeah. what we do is when someone picks something off the list, that's off the table. It's off the table. Right, right, that makes sense. So, and then it just goes around and we do top fives. And then when we release the episode, when you are listening to this on YouTube or Apple or Spotify, subscribe to our Apple. So, oh no, not Apple. Well, Apple too. It's probably the Apple podcast too. Yeah, yeah, but also the YouTube page. Yeah, we need that help. Hit that bell of notifications. Let's go. Yeah. But we like to put it up on our Instagram too, and let the fans kind of vote who had like the, who has the best top five list. Okay. And so we've done a couple. We've done things that were green, which which <laughs> which was really good. It was random. Uh, we did snacks. You did I was the snacks on that episode, one, yeah. And then y'all, we also did a Disney. We did Disney movies. Too. Like Disney owned okay. properties. Okay. And then we've done. Uh, I think that's the only three we've done. You did fried chicken restaurants once. I did do fried chicken restaurants. That's right. I, yeah, that one, that one was pretty fun. So Is I was there wondering for you guys to be able to do five chicken restaurants. Oh, dude! Is it really? I don't. Apparently, I'm missing out on some restaurants. That well, you should go listen to the episode because it's fantastic. Okay. And my list definitely crushed mm-hmm. Sydney's. It was it was me and Sydney. Oh, oh, it was the two of you. Yeah, it was just two. Of, yeah, oh, okay. So, that, that's, so there's definitely en- there's definitely enough to do ten. Yeah, yeah okay. fifteen's uh, possible though. I believe it may be. Yeah, probably. 
So, I was wondering, would y'all like to do that again? Absolutely. Why Let's not? do it. All right. Fantastic. Are you thinking of characters, not actual movies? Or are you thinking about Star Wars movie well, shows? Well, well I haven't told you the category yet. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. So, this one. Oh. This, this one's going to be fun. Okay. Top five draft list of people or characters named Chris. Oh, so it's not a Star Wars thing? This is just a draft? No, 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 yeah. It's just, oh, yeah, yeah, I thought we were in the Star Wars trend. Okay, people nah, named nah, Chris. Nah. Okay. People named yeah, yeah. Chris. All <laughs> right. So you have to think about it. You have to get clever with it. All mm-hmm. right. Go a little deep here. Okay. But Chris. Okay. All right. I have like one already, so I have to think about four more. Okay. But Garrett, you get the advantage of going first. So this could be actors, characters, people we know personally. Yeah, yeah. I don't know now. I don't know if the fans would vote know. for that. Right, right. right. But you I got can. it. Okay, I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just getting my, getting the parameters here. Oh, this, is, this is tough, man. Oh, don't tell me you don't know any Chris. Don't know any Chris Hemsworth. That's my number one. That's Chris, Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth. Okay. That's a good Starting one. Starting off strong. All right. Is it strong? God. Too bad he retired from acting. God it's of not, Thunder. It's not really that strong. He retired from acting. So. Well, we still love Thor, though. You have to admit, Thor's awesome. Thor was great. Probably, probably one of my favorite. Probably. My favorite Marvel character, if I had to be, yeah, if be, I had to be, honest. Had to be honest. I, I'll give you credit because I'm That's still going to beat you. That's a good one. All right, we got Hemsworth is off the table. Mm-hmm. What do you have? Okay, I'm going to go with Chris Kringle. No, that's what I was going to go with. <laughs> Dang it! Dang it! Santa Claus. Claus. Thank God. you, because would, he's immortal, lives forever. Unless you're in Tim Allen universe, and then there's a new Santa Claus all the time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he God. delivers joy all over the world. He's got dozens of names. Mm-hmm. He, uh, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's that was mine. That's pretty good. That's, that's, that's pretty oh, good. too I bad. Like I kind of I had a feeling that's God, what you. That's what I, yeah. I was going Chris Kringle. <laughs> all right, for my first pick though, I'm gonna go with Chris Kattan. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the first pick. <laughs> okay. But maybe He'll be five. down there in five. If yeah, yeah. We... I'm, I'm going to go with Captain America, Chris, Chris Evans. Chris Evans is a you good You know, one. he's also great in Knives Out, uh, which is a good movie. He's also great in... Oh, that's uh, the, Knives Out is the one um, with... Um, Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. 007. That was a really good movie. Yeah, he's really good. It was yeah. a lot of fun. And uh, he's also Human Torch in the, uh, mm-hmm. Johnny Storm. He's a great guy. I love Captain America. Chris Evans, booyah. Okay. All right, that's the first pick. Strong first pick. What do you got for the second pick? I'm going to go action hero. He's comedy. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Chris yeah. Pratt. He's a yeah. funny yeah. man. Yeah, yeah we get, well, we got the we got the Marvel Marvel 3 there. Chris Pratt's pretty fantastic. And Chris Evans and Chris Evans. Yeah, so the Marvel ones are off the table then. Yeah. I just had to empty Most out the popular them. ones that y'all might use because I think I've got a few obscure ones. Oh, look. Okay. Obscure is where I think you get the W. Yeah, they. I mean, they have to be really good, ex- obscure ones, though. Um, and that's where I'm going to struggle, is trying to come up with some more. Um, uh, okay, for number two, this guy is really fit and healthy. He's always positive. He puts a positive spin on everything. My name's not Chris. It's Chris Traeger from Parks and Rec. Oh, oh Chris okay. Traeger. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, absolutely. Positively. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> You're a, doing a great job. A great job. <laughs> what's, what's, what does he always say? Uh, he says, what's his phrase he always says? It is literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> fantastic. Literally the best thing I've seen today. Literally the best Chris. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's, that's fantastic choice. Yeah. All right. So for my second Chris, I want to go a little bit of the comedy route. I'm going to go with my boy Chris Rock. That's a good uh, one. Great comedian. I love him. To, can take to a death. slap. Can take a slap. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It, I think he reacted the best way possible. A hundred percent, he did. And crushed him a year later in a multi-million dollar Netflix Dude. deal. Yeah, that guy. Will Smith has. Ze- I have zero respect for yeah. him anymore. Yeah, I, I do love Independence Day, but I Independence Day it. will always be great. Um, I what did I watch the other day? Was it Wild Wild uh, West? No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> Men in Black. I, oh, I Robot. You remember, I Robot. You remember, yeah, that's dude. a really good movie. So good. Um, great early two thousands action. Anything Chris? You know. uh, anything Will Smith did? Prior to the slap, <laughs> love it. <laughs> Afterwards, yeah. except I'll, marrying Jada Pinkett <laughs> <laughs> because she's the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, all right, Chris Rock. Chris boom. Rock. That's a good one. You got a little diversity, man. What, what you got, bro? This one's going off the rails, I think. I think this is this could work. This might not. This is really it's a bit of a stretch, but he does have Chris in his name. Okay. Uh oh. Jesus Chris. Does that I don't know. I think, um, all right, saying fine. that Jesus Christ. Uh, well, has keep Chris in mind, Chris Christ. is usually a shortened version of Christopher. Think about that. So his name's not Jesus Christopher. All right, yeah, fine. Yeah. I'll just go Chris. It's really like with Jesus the, the Christ. Off. Yeah, I'll go with the Chris. Who's Jesus Chris? I'm just gonna go with the Chris then. The Chris. Yeah, shortened uh, version of the Chris. You know Christ. what? Here's here's what I'm gonna do right think here. First of all, it's not Christ. I think you just chose the name Chris. And you have nothing else, and I'm gonna let you have that because it makes our list stronger. Because you don't know what you're doing. That's fine. Boo, y'all. That's fine. Have the Chris on your list. What is the Chris? Yeah. Cr- all right. Good luck. Chris get- is usually a shortened version of Christopher. You're trying to put Jesus Christ. Yeah, but Christopher and it's is called nothing- Jesus. Christopher the Christ. has nothing to do with Christ. Um, what are you talking about? Both could be shortened. I, I have this. If you said idea. if you said Christmas, you know what? I may give you that. No, nah, yeah, because you pronounce you don't pronounce it. You don't. You don't nah. No, no, no. I, I think it's different. I mean, it's not a per individual, but but yeah. Okay, you go with the Chris. All right, and we'll that's let fine. the fans decide whether or not right. that is. I'm so, a fool, but yeah. I'm running with it. That's okay. fine. I uh, you. All right, number three. Um, he's been in uh, some great comedy movies. One in particular is a trilogy that is really great with my boy Jackie Chan. Um, great stand-up comedian. That's Chris Tucker. Oh, <laughs> Chris Tucker! I love yeah. Chris Tucker. Yeah, we. Dude, I watched. Rush I watched Rush Hour recently with. Um, we watched it as a family because I was like, I think Liam would like this. It's funny. It's got action. It's got a lot of bad language. In it yeah, <laughs> that I forgot about. You're like <laughs> mostly oh. from Chris Tucker. <laughs> yeah, you're like, <laughs> but but he is really funny, and yeah. you haven't you haven't heard from him in a while. But I think he's been doing like. Um, small comedy clubs doing stand up again recently, and mm-hmm. I've heard Dave Chappelle talk about him. Yeah, he's, uh, but he's what, really funny. He's in the new Air movie too, with Matt Damon. Oh, and, oh uh, about um about the Air Jordans. Mark, Air Jordans. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, for my third pick, I got a fever, <laughs> <laughs> and the only prescription. This is such a good one. Is my cowbell. Oh man, I wish I would have picked it's this. It's Christopher Walken. Yeah. I hit your face with a soldering iron. Dude, Christopher Walken is Christopher great. Christopher Walken. Let's go. It is baby. great. And just about in everything he does, too, is great. Yeah, no, yeah. He's is he still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go with so let's give a little bit of the fans of a recap. We got three. So who do you have? I have Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pratt, and The Chris. <laughs> Chris, all right. What's your fourth pick? All right. I'm going to have to go with, he got me a day off school. He's a little bit controversial. He got canceled post-mortem. Chris DeFer Columbus. Chris for Columbus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he got you a day off school. You know what? Uh, yeah, I, honestly, I, that's a great pick. Actually, it's historical. They still give people day off schools for Columbus Day? Indigenous still, yeah. People's Day. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get off. A, I don't get a day off work anymore. Work. I think it is a national. I don't like, get a day off college. college for it. I'll tell you that. But that's good. All that's right, a good one. All right, remind the fans where you're at, Jake. Um, okay, so I started off with Chris Kringle, and then I went with Chris Traeger from Parks and Rec, and then Chris Tucker. All right, what's your fourth pick? <sighs> Man, I've I've been thinking through while you guys have been talking trying to find another Chris and um <laughs> sorry what are y'all doing over there and um I think I think the one I'm gonna go with was um ran for president um didn't get very far but he was kind of a funny media personality when he was on the campaign trail he's been on a few late night shows that would be Chris Christie, governor of New Jersey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Little, uh, you know what? You're breaking the mold, kind of getting out of just the actor Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, little, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know if this is allowed. Give us your rundown first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of who you've got so far. So I, I got Chris Evans, mm-hmm. Captain America. I got Chris Rock, little comedian. I got Christopher Walken. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this is going to be allowed. But I want y'all to maybe go with me on this one. Probably okay. more allowed than mine. All right. 
Krispy Kreme. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on, dude. dude that's come a on. that's a really <laughs> good one. <laughs> like, oh, mine man. counts. His counts. <laughs> like Krispy Kreme donuts, dude. Hot no, and fresh. If his counts, <laughs> yours can count. Well, here's the thing, though. I only thought of Krispy Kreme because you said uh, Chris Kreme. I was Christy. like, big, he's a bigger dude. I was like, I want. I bet he's on a Krispy Kreme donuts. That, that's <laughs> like, it. That's so, it. So, Krispy got, Kreme. That's baby. a good one. Hot and fresh. That's, that's a, a good one. That's what they describe this podcast as what was your fourth one garrett you're about to be on number five christopher right? columbus christopher columbus. Columbus. Yeah. Yeah. that's right that's yeah, right. yeah all right so let's round it up your top five with your fifth pick right here what you got i literally do not know any more famous people or characters named chris mm-hmm. okay. so i'm gonna have to go with a dude i knew in high school who <laughs> i have a video of moisturizing a corn cob in <laughs> class Ew. uh yeah no we don't know why he just had an ear of corn and some a thing of moisturizer and we're like middle of math class he's just like hey guys watch this ew and i'm we're you like, don't have to do the what motions. the heck bro yeah you don't have to measure, uh yeah. chris herock yeah shout out shout out to shout that out guy. chris herock see how many yeah. votes he gets yeah you. he's <laughs> definitely gonna lose this list but that's he was okay. like you started strong and then when Dude. you did when you did the the chris thing you, sh- you could have said christening sh- you know that's something you know what you know what all i'm saying is that Information gathering. Yeah, yeah. 11 more years time together information. Over 20 more years time together information. This is not fair. Yeah, you know what? I, I'll give it to you. We, the, y'all we have the prep culture. time. Y'all like, y'all have, y'all Batman, y'all got the prep time, okay? Me? No prep time. No prep time. He doesn't know a lot it's of It's a Christmas. nice way of saying we're old. Yeah, that's the, literally okay. the longest way, way to say you're old. This one it. might not get me a lot of votes. All right. But I have to put him there and... I guess I can't. I it has to be my number five. Like if I didn't think about him till now, like if I could, I would put him up higher on my list. Mm-hmm. Okay, because he is partially responsible for one of my favorite things in the world. One of my favorite worlds. My okay. favorite characters. He's the son of an incredible author, J.R.R. Tolkien, Christopher Tolkien. Okay. What, what did Christopher Tolkien, he created the he, Cimmerillion? So, no, J.R.R. Tolkien wrote the Cimmerillion, but Christopher Tolkien has a lot of um, other books and stories, um, the Unfinished Tales, and um, he's in, like, he was in charge of the Tolkien estate for a long time, mm-hmm. and um, just just added on to that universe so much in such a great way. And I've actually just started this new podcast called the Lord of the Rings Lorecast. Oh, okay. And they just, like, he they do start from the beginning, and they just break it down, and... He, this guy is reading from the Cimmerillion, but a lot of other Christopher Tolkien works as well. And it's just, I love that universe so much. It's very interesting. So he's just added to something that I love very, very, very much. And so Christopher Tolkien's going to be number five. And if you would allow it, I would probably actually move him up to number three. Oh, well, yeah, it's just, it's a total though. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's cool. a total yeah, Christopher five. Tolkien, number number five, Chris, for me. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, I'm trying to debate which one I want to go with because I have two that are kind of, Really, three. I have three more. I should have gave Chris, uh, not Chris, uh, I should have gave Garrett some of these Chris's because <laughs> you're struggling because I got three. Uh-huh. And I'm going to choose the third option. Okay. Because I think it brings a little bit of diversity into our crowd. Okay. Christina Applegate. Okay. Love her to death. She is a wonderful actress, bringing a woman into the, to the Chris's sphere. And she's fantastic. Married with children. Hilarious show. Yeah. Uh, she's also she did a couple of SNL hosting gigs. Uh, she was she a guest star on Friends a few times, right? As yeah. Rachel's sister. Yes, uh, her and uh, Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. So uh, I love her. I had two more Chris's. That, that I want to hear your other ones. I mean, it's not a, well, it's not a bad ad. Yeah, yeah. Chris Christopherson. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, who, he was an actor, Man? but he's also in the Highwaymen yeah, with yeah. Johnny Cash and Willie Willie um, Nelson. Yeah, I love. And who was him. the other one? There was uh, four of them. I thought. Uh, Waylon Jennings. Waylon Jennings, thank yeah. you. Yeah, Highland so, is great. So, uh, so I love him. But and then the other one was Chris Pine, who played you know Captain Kirk. Chris Pine. Uh, yeah, I love yeah. Chris Pine. I've loved a lot of the stuff he's done. Have you seen that new Dungeons and Dragons movie? Yes. Is it really good? Really good. Is it funny? It's funny. It's action. There's some comedy. Would it be uh, okay for uh, me to uh, take my eight year old to? I don't know that because I don't watch the lens of a parent. Okay. Uh, okay. But I will say, like my dad and I went, and we both thoroughly enjoyed it because we even okay. watched like the it looked, 2000. It looked like it was gonna be really good. It wasn't really good because, like, whenever I think whenever people when they make movies based on like something like that, like a, a board game or a video game, 
if they try to take it too seriously, that's when it comes off as being really yeah. bad. But they, I don't think they took themselves too seriously. Yeah. And the, all the stuff I saw, it looked really funny. It, it was it was really funny. And they also brought in some like uh, dungeon masters type people to help run the like help with the script. So it felt like oh, so it felt like a campaign. It's more like a, a like a labor of love. Yeah. from people who really love Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. Yeah, because like when I we went you. to go see it, we saw literally like three. I think they call themselves guilds. We saw like three different guilds of like people coming as a whole group to watch yeah. it, and they were they were loving it too. They were laughing hysterically because there was certain characters like they had like NPCs in there, okay. you know, okay. like yeah. you know. So it was like kind of like really that. Funny. And so they were like they were pretty meta with the humor, but it was also like kind of adventurous. Like you didn't know what was going to happen, and uh, it, it was it was really cool. And all, it wasn't just uh, Chris Pine that was great. There was a lot of different characters that were. Yeah, really there was cool. one guy. He was um, he played kind of a nerdy guy in the Jurassic Park series. Yeah, yeah, he's in that. He's, he's a magician. In that, and Michelle Rodriguez is in it. Mm-hmm. Um, she does great too. Yeah. yeah, they also have a uh, a little cameo from uh, Bradley Cooper. Oh, so, so, okay. so he's he's pretty funny. I'll have to check that out. I'll have to go see if like maybe it would be okay. I don't want to spoil it for you, so yeah. I won't tell you what he does. But it's pretty funny. Hey, those aren't bad. Those aren't bad lists. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, two or three weren't bad. So for for our for our clips, <laughs> all right. I just Garrett, remembered another famous Chris, and it makes me so upset. Well, you can't add it now. I can't now. Well, what 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 is it? Though? It was like Christopher Roberts, like from Winnie the Pooh. Not Roberts. Robinson. Christopher Robin. Robinson. Christopher, Christopher Robin. Robin. Christopher I, Robin. I, Christopher no Robin, but like okay. still, that's that's better than my last pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. I don't know. I would have changed it out with the Jesus Chris one. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, true. All right, so what is your five? So we can tell the audience right now. Oh crap! What are your five? All right, my five. I've got Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pratt, uh, Jesus Chris. That's terrible. Um, Chris uh, Herock, and then I'm forgetting my fourth one. Uh, Christopher, Christopher Columbus. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I had Chris Kringle. Um, and then I did uh, Chris Traeger, and then I did Chris Tucker, and then I did Chris Christie, and then I did um, Christopher Tolkien. Yeah, the Tolkien. Yeah, yeah Chris Tolkien. And for me, I had Chris Evans, Captain America. Mm-hmm. What's up? I had Chris Rock, comedian. That's a really good one. I, I had Chris. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Krispy Kreme. No, Chris, Christopher Walken was your Christopher third one. Christopher Walken. And then after I said Chris Christie, you said Krispy Kreme. Kreme. That's a really good one. And then I had Christina Applegate. Yeah. yeah. So that's so, pretty good. There's yeah. some. I think there's some room to. It may be pretty even amongst yeah. the votes. So we'll put know. we'll put up in the little thing. So if you're on our Instagram, Chris Christie might have buried me. <laughs> it depends on like where they are politically. Like, yeah. Right. Boo. boo. I'm gonna have to add my boy Chris Hirock when this drops. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah absolutely. Like, go like you it. Get a, go subscribe. You get a shout out. You get a shout out in this hey, episode. Hey, bud. I know I haven't talked to you in like a year since I graduated. Hope your corn. Like, hope your corn like, staying moist. Hope you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> hope the corn's still moist, buddy. <laughs> Uh, don't let it dry. <laughs> oh gosh! I love oh it. lord! Oh man! That was good. No, uh, no, I love it, and I, I like these things because when people are listening right now, like when you're watching this or listening, they're probably yelling different Chris's. Yeah, like why did you, you know? pick this one? Like because yeah. when we did the snack one, I had like 20 people message me of like, "You didn't say this snack. You didn't say this." Yeah. I was like, "Oh, yeah, I'm sorry," but I love it. I love the interaction. So if you have a Chris comment, message, whatever, let Drop us know. Like. There. Uh, get creative with it because I think like Chris Kring- uh, Chris Kringle is really creative. Christopher Columbus, like there's there's several and they're just like oh I didn't really think about that. Jesus so, Chris, not so much. Yeah, yeah. I did my best. We're you know, well, what, uh, who's the guy? Christopher Reeves would have been a good. One Christopher too. Reeves would have been really great. Yeah, you know Superman. who that is? You know who that is, Garrett? Oh. Christopher Reeves. Um, no. He was the original Superman. Yeah, Superman. The movie that came out in the... Was it the 70s? Did it come out? Was that movie in the 70s? Yeah, it's the 70s. That's 30 years BG. Before Garrett. Yes. (laughs) Why would I know that? Why would I know that? It's like 30 years BG. I don't know, man. I I mean, I I watched... It was before my time, too. Yeah, I wasn't I watched watched it as a kid. If it's 30 Um, years, it's 20 years It's. I mean, it's got, you know... um, BB? Sometimes movies that are really, really old, they don't, especially ones that are kind of like that kind of fantasy, they don't really hold up that well because the graphics just aren't that great. That one actually does okay. Mm-hmm. It's not bad if you watch it again. Now, if you <laughs> if you watch anything after the first Superman movie, <laughs> it kind of goes like this. Because uh, who's the comedian uh, that comes on there? 
like Superman Four. Oh, it was Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? The, Superman were, Four: Quest for Peace. Yeah, they were trying to get some. <laughs> the worst, one of the worst superhero movies ever made. If you oh, listen, there's Lord. a podcast where the guy who played not General Zod, but his like henchman, yeah, like, yeah. really big guy. Mm-hmm. Apparently, like behind the scenes, Christopher Reeves like later on in his Hollywood like felt like he was Superman. Yeah, and he was like, "Do you want to mess with me?" And the guy was like. I will destroy you. Yeah. The, the guy's telling him on a podcast, he's telling stories like, back up off me. Yeah, you're he's not like, really Superman. He's like, do you know who I am? I'm Christopher Reeves. I'm Superman. And he like, Dex, Dex him. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh and, my and goodness. And so they had to like, separate him and like, then they had to like, make it where like, he wasn't around him at all. Wow. So, because they could cut him out because they still needed him because they feel I thought so Christopher much. Reeves was more like, level headed than that. It, it could just went to his head, maybe you know, for a little bit. So, what, Garrett, what you also don't know uh, then, that Christopher Reeve had a real uh, bad horse accident in mm-hmm. like the was it the nineties, eighties, or nineties? Yeah, he got I'm kicked off sure. a horse and broke his back. He was a quadriplegic for the rest of his life. Yeah, after that, I, and then I think he died. I think he died in a car accident later on. Uh, that uh, he then. wasn't driving. That's what I know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Sorry. Jeez, <laughs> sorry. man! <laughs> you know what? That was rough. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, I really <laughs> took the legs out of him on that one. You did. Um, you did. So caught me off guard the way a good joke should. Uh, yeah, I know. I don't think you, there was anyone taking the legs out from under him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Dang, sure. guy, you guys yeah. are roasting Chris for Reeve yeah. right now. Jeez, Ooh. he needs a hand up, and you're. I watch, oh no! You know what? I watch Family Guy, and my favorite character is Joe Swanson. You can't get mad at me. <laughs> oh. <No>. What? <laughs> what? That's not the way it works. That's, That's not, not the way, way it works. works. Hey Peter, so. hey, Peter. He's, he's like, I can hey, make Peter. fun. I can make fun of handicapped people <laughs> because I like a handicapped character in okay. a TV show. <laughs> It's uh, the most <laughs> absurd thing I've ever heard. Garrett. Is, that, is that the same guy that goes? Oh, okay, Cusco. Yeah, that's um uh Patrick Warburton. Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Cusco. Oh, Cusco is poison, poison for Cusco. The poison specifically made for Cusco. <laughs> Emperor's New Groove is really funny. It's that's a, a really movie. funny so movie. Good. Oh, I just thought of a Chris that would have probably pushed my list over the top. What is that? Chris Farley. Oh, oh no! my gosh. Well, I said Chris Rock. I should have went. We should, have, we should have thought of that. Can I change Chris Christie for Chris Farley? No, no. What if I let Garrett change his stupid Jesus Chris I'm one? keeping Jesus Chris. You know what? If if Christina and Christopher and Krispy Kreme can be shortened to Chris, then Christ, which is only one letter off, can be shortened. Well, Chris no, is if, in the if name. You, if you kept the... What is it, uh, the etymology of the word? Mm-hmm. You, it would just it would be Jesus Christ and not Christ. Uh, I think. Okay, and... It's okay. It's all right. So with that, we always like to end our episodes with a little nugget of wisdom. Also, I, I, you're hilarious. I'm thinking all these Chris's. We have to do this more often because I think this is just fun, interactive. Uh, yeah, and, and just kind of come off of the spot makes us kind of be creative and not. Sometimes we could prepare and come with it, with a list. But yeah, I feel like well, that's not as organic. It's not as organic, and there is the potential, though. Like even if we prepared separately, one of us could call out one of the other ones. Oh yeah, I you know, mark it I out. think I think this way makes it a little more to where that's not likely to happen. Because you wouldn't Be- get cr- you wouldn't get the Chris, <laughs> right? Exactly. That wouldn't, <laughs> that that wouldn't have happened. And me stealing yours may not have. It may have happened. It just happened that yeah. I I got to go before you and pick. Yeah, Chris Kringle. Chris was Kringle. My first pick. Yeah. So, all right. We like to do nuggets of wisdom. Garrett, we'll let you go first, man. What? Maybe it could be Star Wars themed nugget of wisdom, or it could be whatever you want because it's not really a Star Wars themed episode. <laughs> he but, looks like he's struggling to come up with one. No, I got one. Oh, got, you one. got one. Let's hear it. You yeah. knew this was coming up. You've been on enough episodes to know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we, we do don't nuggets always of do it, but sometimes. Man, what, all, what, what episode have we not I, done? I think every wisdom? episode. I, Never mind, my brain's Actually, there might there was one that we were on where we didn't do a nugget of wisdom because we did we, the uh, Christmas movie. Yeah, we did the, Christmas the top three movie Christmas movies. Uh, so I think right, the one right. where it was me and Sydney, that's my we might not know. Did anyway, I don't know. what's your nug of wisdom? I would say that sometimes it is healthy to go into a season of solitude so that you have time to retrospect on yourself in order to grow. That's very good. Can you say that one more time? What's sometimes, it? sometimes it's healthy to go, <laughs> healthy to go into a season of solitude. A season of solitude. So you have that you have the time and space time, to space. retrospect, retrospect, and so focus on growing on yourself as a person. So you can look at what you've done, and then to be and just have a retrospective on was that a good thing? 
could I have done something different to make that a better situation? Whatever. Yeah. I get in, that. In college, that is what I realized because I went into a big season of solitude about twice during my first year of college. And I would say that those two seasons, while at first I did not like going into them, they really helped me grow and learn a lot about myself and how to become better as a person. So it's almost like it's like a, a, a counterbalance to what could end up being a season of depression. Yeah. Because if you go into a season of depression where you're just wallowing in your failure or, you know, whatever happened that maybe sent you into that season of solitude, instead of wallowing in that, you're self examining and thinking, what could I have done to change this? Yeah. Or what could I what could I do next time? I think this isn't my nugget, but life is life is a series of lessons. And any anything that you experience is a lesson to be learned, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. So I think that's a very healthy way to look at going into um, what I'm sure everybody goes through is some sort of season of, if you want to call it a depression or solitude, whatever. That's a very healthy way to manage that. I think sometimes it's good to intentionally put yourself there. Yeah. Because a lot of times the world is saying, this is how you should think. This is how you should act. This is how you should do. Dude, for real. And even the people around us sometimes are like, this is how you should be. This is how you should act. This is what you should want. This is what you should do. What do you want? Right. How can you improve? Because no two people are going to believe the same way, act the same way, improve the same way. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it really does help to just find yourself, recenter yourself, and strengthen your core so that you can have that balance and durability when you go back in. The only thing I would add... Is make sure God's part of that entire process. Yeah, for sure. It's not, of course, because you don't want right. to like you don't want to just rely on your own intuition yeah. or your own um, thoughts of how things should go. You want to you want to seek out what Christ has for you and yeah. to walk that path yeah, and not your own path. That, yeah. yeah. When I think of self growth, and I feel like I'm stealing some time here, but no, I'm no, you're go good. When I think of self growth, uh, a person exists in three states. I would say okay. the mind the body, and the soul. Mm -hmm. And in order for someone to grow, you must find a balance between all of those. Yeah, You got to make sure you're physically healthy so that you're able to do stuff and that you are able to physically move because your body is what anchors you to this world. Mm -hmm. Your mind is what you learn from the world around you, the lessons and stuff, your consciousness. But then the soul is what I would say is the most important one to have strengthened because that is what controls your morality and yeah. it really keeps you balanced and anchored where you should be. Yeah, that's good. Because your body can fail you. Your relationship with God, though, that's not going to fail you. Your mind, as you get older, that can begin to fail you. That's true. Your relationship with God, you can keep that strong no mm. matter what you're going through. Yeah. So I think to truly have that growth and that strength, you have to focus on all three. Yeah, growing for sure. in all three. Because if you focus on one too much and let the other two get weaker... Someone could get really strong, but they're suffer. an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Someone watched, a, someone watched a YouTube video before he came in here. I did not. <laughs> I've got a whole journal, man. Ooh. Whole no, journal. It's fantastic. Yeah, we're just missing. I know you miss it. Yeah. I know you... No. Uh, heart, mind, body, and soul. And the, you know, that's what it says. Earth. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> Wind. <laughs> No, Air. it's just like water. <laughs> love God, love God, all your heart, mind, body, and soul. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the greatest commandment. That's good, man. Hey, way to get emotional. I love it. All right, Jake, what you got? I'm gonna talk to you about something that I think is really important that okay. everybody needs to hear. Okay, I'm gonna talk to you guys about something called the zipper merge. The zipper merge. There are two types of people in this world. There are people who, when they realize that a lane is ending on the highway, they get into the lane that is not ending. There is another type of person that when they realize a lane is ending on the highway, they stay in the lane that they're in until it comes to the end, and then they merge over. That, my friends, is called the zipper merge, and that is the correct way to do it. If you are the person that when you see a lane is ending, that you merge into the lane that is not ending, you're creating a traffic jam, and you're causing problems. When, when if, if and, and people who do that, the people who the people who do that also get mad at the people who are doing it the correct way, which is called the zipper merge. They see the people keep going in the lane, and they and then as the lane ends, they will merge over. That They get mad at those people because they're like, they need to wait their turn in line. Well, actually, the people doing the zipper merge are doing it the correct way because that creates less congestion on the highway. So if you are the person 
who does not zipper merge when the lane ends on the highway, you need to get yourself in a right space and start zipper merging. You guys hear me? I think it might be uh, time yeah. for another season of solitude in my car. Zipper <laughs> merge. Zipper uh, merge. I thought he was going to be like, there's some people who let their zipper down. Yeah, no, that's what I thought. I was like, I was looking nope. down. Yeah, like, yeah, I was like, zipper down today, like, the whole time. Yeah. Like, all right, this is a re- it's a real, real traffic pattern that needs to be observed with more reverence. Well, and that you, is the zipper merge. Do you know what the gourd is in driving? The gourd? <laughs> no, the gourd. <laughs> it makes me think of a pumpkin. That yeah, that well... Fun. It's so when you're driving, right, and you see like maybe there's a turning lane, uh-huh. but before that there's this like yellow and it has like lines. Yeah, oh yeah, it's like it. that's called a gourd. Uh huh. You're not allowed to drive through that. Correct. I I I, I did I not know it was called that. the gourd, but yeah. I did know that you're not supposed to. That's what there's a section where you're supposed to merge into that. Also, yeah. just also speak to the zipper merge. If you are in a lane that becomes to a turn lane. And then you try to merge over. That yeah. is actually not a good thing to do. The, the, say that one more time. If so, like, if you're in a lane, if if you're if a zipper merge occurs when there's two lanes that go to one lane, right? Right. But if you're if you're in a lane that is going to like be a turn only lane, you don't need to follow that one all the way up and then try to merge over, because the turn only lane has its end route it has its purpose and that is for you to turn it is not for you to try to get up to the front and then merge over mm. that's usually that's against the law usually you're crossing a gourd to do that yeah and you're not, not supposed I'm, to do that you're not supposed to do that I so felt, yeah i felt for that mistake. respect the gourd and then respect the zipper merge that was that's my nugget well, of wisdom that, hey it's I feel like there's some there's some stories behind that. We'll have to get to it in a different episode. You should be a driving ed instructor, Jake. Oh, they don't pay. I probably couldn't that. pass a driving test now. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't looked at what, uh, like, I haven't done are in those park books anymore. Since then. I can. I I've probably parallel parked maybe ten times in my almost twenty years of driving. Yeah. Uh, so that's not a big. As a long big. as you don't break the law, you pass. Oh. That's not true. <laughs> I, okay, yeah, I, I didn't. Right. I didn't. Yeah. Pa- I didn't pass my first driving test. Someone who took I it, didn't break the law. I took it right yeah, before get my senior year. The dude literally told me before the test, dude, long you don't break the law, you're gonna pass this. Yeah, he took yours during COVID, where they just like mailed it out to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was, a year after COVID, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah COVID yeah. was still a thing then. Yeah, it's not anymore. So here's my nugget of wisdom. Give it. And I, I've been thinking about this for a while. Warm, uh, fresh and, nug. And I remember my, my grandpappy used to tell me this. He said, happiness um, can be found in the darkest of times if we remember just to turn the light on. And I remember him telling me that before he dropped me off to live with my aunt and uncle. And and so I just I just remember that uh, heartfelt moment. I thought he told you that when you were 13. Oh, was it when I was 13? Yeah, he told me that when I was 13, too. He said it multiple times. He was, he was a good guy. Garrett doesn't get it. It's a Dumbledore quote. It's, it's right, right, <laughs> right there. It's right there. Okay, y'all gonna hate me. I was thinking it was a Narnia reference or something. No, 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 no. It's 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 Dumbledore. All right. So no, for real. My nugget of wisdom. Oh gosh. Oh, bro. I thought it was your real. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just I was just Josh. It's not a bad nugget. It is. That's true. That's true. Uh, I you use another Dumbledore one. Which is the one where he says, "It is not our abilities that define us; it is our choices." That's, That's a really good one. Quote. I might put that on my quote. Dumbledore's got some good ones. Okay, go ahead, Ben. Yeah. I'm sorry. So really, J.K. Rowling has got some great ones. Uh, here, Here's something that... Okay, here we go. I'm trying to think of what, what I've been thinking about lately, been reading about. The purpose and power of prayer is to draw near to God. You know, when you draw near to God, um, that is the purpose of what we're supposed to do, is to grow in our relationship to love God, so prayer helps us draw near to Him. And then the power of prayer is when we're near God, God can reveal a lot of truths. God can uh, point us in the direction that glorifies Him the most. So remember, the purpose and power of prayer is to draw near to God. So Yeah, man. So that's what I've, that's what I've been in the season of prayer lately. We so. had a pastor who used to talk about getting into your prayer closet on a regular basis. And that not necessarily a closet, but just in a time where you make an intentional effort to get into a time of prayer where you're not just sitting there asking for things. Mm-hmm. You're you're creating a relationship with your creator. Right. 
And that's, yeah, that's, no, that's I, great stuff, man. I love it, man. Uh, I'm all about it. Well, I want to say, Garrett, thank you for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. Jake, thank you for being here. Absolutely. Anytime. We love y'all. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Hit the bell for notifications. Subscribe. Go like all our videos. Watch them. Pull up 14 tabs and watch all the videos at once. It'd be great. So we can get some of those numbers up. Now, I really appreciate it. And I also want to give a shout out to uh, Jackson Payne. He has been creating clips for our YouTube channel, and the clips are getting to be very popular. So, you know, for like an episode that's an hour long, kind of like this one, maybe a little longer than an hour, he'll do like two or three clips that are like 10 minutes long, just so people can get kind of like a taste of it. They're very palatable, too. Like, if you just have, like, a little bit of time, like, if I'm, like, having a sandwich or something, it's nice to just pull that up. I just need a little dose. Just yeah. a little dose. I just need a little dose of the GWB. GWB. <laughs> just, a little, just, a little. just a little dose of GWB. Yeah. We love you. We appreciate you. Peace.